This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. One of the best ways to get good at job hunting is to talk to people who do it well. That's why once a month, I interview a Max List reader who found a job they love. Our guest today is Shay Noble. She's the HR manager of Kyocera International. It's a diversified manufacturing company in Vancouver, Washington. Shay Noble believes in the power of authenticity. In a story you can find on the MaxList website, Shay says the first step she takes in a job search is to review her resume, delete anything she wants to avoid repeating, and make sure her resume aligns with what she wants to do next. Shay, why do you love your job? I really love uh, creating workplaces where people love to come to work every day. Um, And a lot of that's in helping people with personal interactions, helping managers be stronger, um, enhancing our benefits and our employee engagement and our candidate experience. And so that's what I love is just seeing um, kind of planting seeds and watching them grow in the workplace. Uh, We spend so much time at work, We need to enjoy it, and the more we enjoy it, the more productive we can be, and the more we can collaborate and work together, and and it really shows in the way the company performs as well. So that's what I love about my job. And your career, your the recent positions you've had, all all terrific jobs, have been interim roles, Shay, uh, and you've carved out a career for yourself where you might work or at an organization for three, six, 12 months, and then move on. What's attracted you to short-term positions like those? Growing up, I lived overseas in Japan, and my dad was a contractor for the military. So I just, I think it just kind of was part of that idea that you do a job and you do it well, and that it's process-driven and not person-dependent. So I think that's a big part of um, my success and maybe how I see myself as a consultant to a business. Um, some people start a job and they want to be there 30 years. Um, and you know, for me, I think it's just kind of taking that idea of what I learned from the military and saying, how do I set this business up for success? You know, there was a business, a nonprofit that I worked at and I was kind of brought on I've just kind of always had that like change agent idea and, um, but I want to leave it in a better place than I started. And there was a nonprofit that I'd worked for that had a 50% turnover rate. And when I came aboard, you know, I said, instead of filling all these roles that are open, let's stop for a minute. Let's talk about them, what's working, what's not working. And in that, when I left, um, I can't remember how many years ago, I know it's at least more than six years ago, but those, um, you know, much of that organization is still operating in the way that, you know, with the same key people that we brought on in that transition. Um, and they're they're doing well, they're growing. And it's so exciting to see that type of stability brought to an organization that had been full of a lot of um, people coming in and out and not really staying. So to see that impact um, is is amazing. You've had many interim jobs in your career. And, and and again, uh, terrific positions. But as you've made these changes, uh, have you had concerns from employers about the fact that you have moved around so much? And how have you dealt with that, Shay? Yeah, so um, this is one of those moments where it is really important to be authentic. Um, for me, it was strategic in that my current role, um, the you know, it kind of evolved from the needs of the business and also opportunity for myself. Um, When I entered into kind of an interim fractional uh, role um, for the first time was during the pandemic. And I think just leaning into that, being authentic and open in, in, you know, my reasons um, 
And I think that anybody who has left a job or has had a break in employment or who's changing careers, there's always a story behind that. And so I think embracing that story and being upfront about it um, is really helpful. You know, at one point I was able to take seven months off and, you know, it started out, I was just going to take a month or, you know, a couple of weeks, but then I was like, you know what, I this is the first time I've really had an opportunity to um, rest and redefine and connect with my family, things like that. So I just I was able to do that um, through taking, you know, some more short, short-term interim roles. And so, you know, I think it's just being open, um, telling stories and, and just kind of embracing it, not letting myself be the critic about that, but just being open. Um, and I think, I think more workers, you know, this, I think there's a change, there's a shift in how people view work and how they view their purpose. And, um, certainly for myself, uh, you know, kind of seeing, seeing how to put myself into an organization and, and set up those, that impact, um, you know, that really, that really fuels me. When you think about the stories that you've shared with employers who might have concerns about your interim roles uh, or taking a break, what have you found to be most effective uh, when you're both constructing and telling that story? And you're in an unusual position, shape because you've been both a candidate who's taken a break and, uh, and had uh, many interim positions, but you also work on the HR side. So what have you seen uh, be effective when you're sharing that story, both as a candidate and when you're on the other side of the interview table as a hiring manager? In speaking to any type of change or, or addressing anything in your resume that may be, um, you know, being questioned, uh, there's always a flip side. There's always... Um, there's all I think number one is embrace authenticity, share your story authentically, but also be share it with strategic vulnerability. There are times when you don't need to overshare. You just need to be truthful. And so I think um, you know, at one point I took time off work and um, you know, it truly was just to spend time with my family. And I, you know, thankfully had um you know, was able to support myself through that time, but not everybody can do that. Um, life happens, change happens. When you're dealing with human resources, we or recruiters, we know that life intersects and we know um, how to, you know, really I, I see us and a lot of a lot of us see ourselves as advocates. And so if we know what the story is, we can help shape that. Um, you know, as long as we know what the situation is, then we you know, we're really going to be advocating in terms of the skills that we see on paper um, or the, you know, the data that we're gathering from your interview. And so I take that into consideration myself as like, you know, I had an opportunity, the job market's hot. Um, you know, I don't think anybody's going to turn down a job that they've gotten, you know, an increase or an, something that they've really been looking for in their career that maybe their current company doesn't offer. Um, you know, I think we just have to be open and embrace that, you know, the gig mar the gig job market is, is hot. And a lot of people really like that right now. And I mean, certainly for myself, it's been really enjoyable to be able to see best practices throughout businesses. And I think that's really my answer to your first question is, for me, it's all about best practices. There's a benefit to being embedded in an organization for, 10, 15 years or, or more. Um, but there's also a benefit to seeing best practices in, in a variety of businesses and being able to kind of choose and craft what the right answer is for the current organization based on experience. You're not hearing it secondhand, you're seeing it. You know, and that's really, I think, what I've been able to bring through my interim roles. When you've looked for an interim role, uh, is that a different kind of job search? Shay, versus when you've looked for full-time permanent positions that might last three, five, 10 years, are you doing something different when you're looking for a, a short-term position or a fractional role? So since early on in my career, um, I think I really started my career as a consultant. I was consulting with um, 
international students and workers who wanted to work in English speaking countries. So I would work with them. So I've always kind of had this um, consultative approach. Um, you know, there were there was a time where I was actually offered a job and I, I had to turn it down. And they said, well, hey, can we hire you as a recruiter? And so that kind of started a little bit of that idea of an interim, you know, partial or fractional type um, role. So, you know, more recently, I think it's more about casting a wide net. When when you're a job seeker, you might not know really what that dream job is, or you may have an idea. You may have several dream jobs. You're like, hey, I want to work in gaming. I also want to work at an international company. I also want to work close to home. And so that's really kind of the approach I took this time is like, okay, I want to work for you know, I have these ideas of what that dream company and dream role might look like. So piecing things together, gathering information, and then kind of targeting those companies that I know are close to home and meet these, check these other boxes. Um, and then also casting a wide net, seeing what opportunities come up. I say never turn down an opportunity for a conversation um, or an interview you never know how that role can change or evolve as you're interviewing. I've seen it done where, you know, you post a role. I mean, it's it's kind of a guess, right? We we do our best guess. We post a job, and then we we pull data from okay the candidates we've received or the, um, you know, we might get through a phase of interviews and say, hey, wow, we've really priced this job too low. We're not finding anybody in that price range. Or maybe somebody quits in the process and now we're kind of reevaluating a role. I mean, there's so much information we're gathering on a daily basis when we have an open role that, you know, things can shift and evolve um, rapidly. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just being flexible and being open to the opportunities. Um, so, yeah, I, I also think it's great to just connect with people. You know, your opportunities don't always come from just applying to a job. A lot of times it comes from people who follow you on LinkedIn or people who, um, it's not usually the people you know directly. It's the people that know the people you know. You know, they'll say, hey, do you know of anybody in IT that does this? And it's like, oh yeah, this person's on the job hunt. I saw it on their LinkedIn. Here's, you know, here's a referral. There are times when that kicks in. So yeah, I think it's just kind of broadcasting and communicating with others and connecting and you know, that's kind of how I approach the interim roles. Um, it's just, just keeping an eye open and, and conversations. Well, it's been a great conversation, Shay. Now, finally, what's your number one job hunting tip when you reflect back on, on the searches you've done and, and the search that brought you to Kiyosara? So my number one job tip would be to utilize LinkedIn as your professional brand. Um, there's been times in the economy where recruiters and hiring managers will utilize LinkedIn to cold call passive candidates. You know, it's desperate times. We've only gotten one application. We've done everything we can. Um, and we're just not finding what we need. We'll go right to LinkedIn. It's like having a public resume. Um, there are times in the economy where that happens. And I've seen people get incredible increases, incredible uh, promotions through doing that. Um, in the current economy, it's less it's less of a passive market where recruiters have to actively reach, um, reach out to candidates. Um, right now, I think it's more about having that validation when somebody is, when you've applied to a job and we're doing the first few rounds of screening, a lot of us hiring managers will go to LinkedIn, first of all, to just validate that what you say on your resume matches up with what you, you know, with who you are publicly. And, you know, like the, there's just something about that that reasserts what you, you know, what you've told us in an interview or what you've put on your uh, resume. So I think it's really important to do that. And I also think that it's just such a great tool for networking, for staying in touch with coworkers, um, and just really talking about things that you care about. And it's just interesting to me. I kind of put it out in the universe that I want to work for a Japanese company and I 
um, want to work for a global company, a design company that, you know, has innovative engineering, you know, just things that I talk about on my LinkedIn or that I somehow I ended up with uh, two different interviews at um, Japanese companies. And it was so exciting to me. Um, and did it come directly from LinkedIn? No, but somehow putting it out there, I ended up having those opportunities. And so I, I just think there's a lot of power in in utilizing LinkedIn in any type of job search. I, I talk to people all the time that are so tired of their job. Um, they want something new. And then I look them up on LinkedIn and they have nothing publicly. You can't even find them. And really, if you're not utilizing LinkedIn, there's a saying that you don't exist in the job market. So that's probably my number one uh, job search for anybody that's wanting a change. Well, terrific. Well, thank you for sharing your story, Shay. To learn more about Che Noble's job search, visit maxlist.org slash stories. And check out the Maxlist website for dozens of other success stories. On the second Friday of every month, we add a new interview with a Maxlist reader who's found a dream job. Go to maxlist.org slash stories. In the meantime, thank you for listening to today's bonus episode of Find Your Dream Job. This show is produced by Maxlist. Susan Thorntonhoff schedules our guests and writes our newsletter. Lisa Kislinberry Anderson manages our social media. Our sound engineer and editor is Matt Fiorillo. Dawn Mole creates our transcripts, and our music is by Frederick Trujillo. This is Mac Pritchard. See you next week.